Hi everyone. We are out of lockdown. I don't know how long for, but we can go to the market tomorrow. So I've prepared all the flowers. We went to the wholesaler this morning and I've prepared all the flowers. They're in the flower shed. So I'm going to show you and just give you a look at what we're working with for tomorrow. And also wanted to just add a couple of things about purchasing flowers from a wholesaler. Just a couple of little tips that I've learned. Has anybody gone and purchased flowers from their wholesaler yet since my last video? Just to have a go and see what it's like. Uh, let me know if you have. All right, let's go over there. So the flower shed's looking more empty. We're just slowly getting the junk out. We're ordering the plaster this week. We're getting the air conditioner this week and we're hoping to just crank it out. But anyway, here's what I'm working with. We've got our foliage and fillers here. So foliage, some kale, thryptamine. I don't know where the wax flower went. There it is. These wax flowers are being specialty bred by a company called Helix. And they're actually very large. I was listening to the company talk about their flowers on the Dish the Dirt podcast. And the guy was saying that they're hoping, you know, the wax flower's gone from this tiny little filler um, now to more of a sort of secondary flower. And they're really hoping in the future, I have to shut that door because of snakes. Um, they're really hoping in the future that it can become even big enough to become a little feature flower. So to me, that's amazing that flower breeding can do that. But I digress. So here's what we're going with. I went and picked up, how much did I spend today? I think I spent $260 and I had a little bit of a couple of, maybe $40 worth of product left over. Um, these are actually mine, my daffodils. So, and I've just popped this in here. It's euphorbia. I'm just going to see what happens if that condition's okay or not. We've got ranunculus, but they're nowhere near ready. So I went and bought some. They are gorgeous. We've got the dyed disbud chrysanthemum. The chamomile, oh, why can't I ever remember, Mar Marisha or something? I'll have to put that as a link. I bought a heap of that because it's a cute little filler. Luke Kendron, Waratah, the state flower of New South Wales. Aren't they amazing? I love them. Straw flowers, they had some. Whenever they have them, I grab them because I love them. So those will go with the orange ranunculus or I might just pop them in as a bit of color uh we've got stock what's the name of it again I've got some over here I need to just pop that over so it's in the same bucket status um chrysanthemums the wax flower and I've got a few mini gerberas our wholesaler actually gets their delivery on a Thursday morning. So Tuesdays and Thursday mornings. I went in there today, which is Friday, which, you know, the other florists have kind of picked through all the good stuff by that point. But I'm happy with this. The only thing I wish I could have got more of was yellow. I really love yellow flowers. I think they stand out. I think people like them. Well, our customers do. I couldn't get any. There was nothing, nothing yellow. That's why I went with the orange um, ranunculus because that's what we, all we had. So I'm going to put together a heap of bouquets now. I want to try and get this done pretty quick. So I'm not going to film. Um, but something I did want to say is when you're at the wholesaler and you're picking out your flowers, there's some flowers that are a little bit tricky and you can almost feel like, Oh, you know, it wasn't quite worth what they were asking because of certain things and one of them is especially with things like thryptamine and wax flower the way that the stems are organized sometimes the thryptamine is just like it's it's sold by weight I'm pretty sure not by stem count and sometimes you just end up with this massive mass on one stem or three stems or something and you've really got to work hard on it it's actually pretty cheap it's like seven dollars a bunch or something seven dollars a bunch I think so it's actually a pretty cheap flower, but by the time you then have to process it and s strip the stems, separate them, try to work out how you're going to get your value out of that, it, it actually costs a bit more. So 
don't forget that when you're doing your flowers. Some things are a lot more time consuming to process and you need to get your money for that. Something else to look out for is when you're buying stocks or um, snapdragons, just check the bunch that you're buying doesn't have any snapped heads because they snap very easily. And if you come home and you've got a snapped head, you now can't use that stem. Well, you can, but, you know, it's not as good. Um, What else are we thinking? Make sure that the petals aren't crushed on things like um, gerberas. You will get used to it, but it can be really annoying to realise you've just gone in there and looked at colour and variety, grabbed your armfuls, put it in a bucket and left to get home and realize that you can't use those. I bought some disbud chrysanthemums and these are kind of expensive. You're paying per head and you only get five in the bunch and one of the heads was snapped on it. So you've just got to be careful, very careful. Um, Chamomile kind of goes off pretty fast and the lower leaves can go mushy. And I had a bunch where a lot of the leaves up the top and it's just so time consuming to strip leaves off chamomile so you want to get a fresh bunch so you're not having to strip so much off it um luca kendron you can often get a piece now let me get a good angle here where it's got a very short stem and then a big spray of um the flowers and then you have to go and strip each individual one and if you can even find it where it's on, I've, I've pulled them off now, but I had stems like that, like really long pieces that you can actually pull off and turn into an individual stem. So you've kind of got, got to be a little bit smart. And it's not the wholesaler's fault. I mean, for, for ours, they're just buying huge amounts. They make an order. They don't have time to stand there and go through every bunch they order. Um, but they would be accounting for their waste in their figures so I mean I think as a florist it's pretty hard to make sure you're making a living so there's a fine line between making sure you're charging enough and undercutting yourself so anyway I'm going to make up some bunches I'll show you at the end and then we'll talk a bit more okay that is this is all we've got left over now and Malia's making herself a bouquet but this is what I've done so many beautiful bouquets so we've got 55 55 75 and then i've got 17 35 dollars so let me give you some close-ups gorgeous sea of flowers so now I've got to add the prices to them we just do them on little laminated circles um, I'll give the shed a clean up I've got to sweep the floor pack the buckets up just tidy it up as much as we can because we're going to be working on the shed this weekend and yeah we'll get going in the morning to the market so I'll see you then Next time, probably you can give me your leftover flowers. What time is it? I got here. We need, we can make it. Um, <laughs> I got, um, I got here, I don't know, it's an hour and a half into the market. Yeah. And we've nearly sold out. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Uh, oh, and the orange ones, the big bright orange ones are kind of, that's the last one. That's yeah, interesting. They, 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 they no one said bye to me. Is he scared? He's Hi 
Hi everyone. So we obviously got back from the market a few days ago. <laughs> Today's Thursday and that was Saturday. <clears throat> and as you saw, we just went and had like a bit of a family time together because it was just so nice to be out of lockdown. And now we're on Thursday and <laughs> Aubrey's going into lockdown again. And um, we're just holding our breath, like hoping, hoping, hoping that we are not going into lockdown as well. Because I've just went and spent a whole heap of money on flowers. So anyway, I thought what I might do at the end of this video is give you a very quick look at how things are looking on the farm. And then I think maybe next week I'll do a proper like tour for you. So I'll flip this around. We'll have a look. Moroni's mowing. Because it is now spring and the grass is just, well, this has been mowed, but it's kind of out of control again. Anyway, something really interesting I want to show you. Our ranunculus. So these, this isn't all of them, but last year we left these ranunculus in the paddock. Like we grew them in pots in the paddock. And then at the end of summer, well not at the end of summer, at the end of their growing season, we kind of couldn't be bothered doing anything. So we just left them out there. So they sat in the baking hot sun all summer out in the paddock. We didn't water them, nothing, um, through heat waves and everything. <laughs> and then we noticed um, through, it, through autumn they'd started to sprout again. We were like, wow, I can't believe they survived. So we left them here and they're actually doing better than any of our other ranunculars. And what we think has happened is we think because they're in the pots the soil temperature gets warmer a lot quicker and so they just take off and then they bloom. So it's making us wonder if we could grow them in the grow bags like they do, like they grow things in Mexico, which I had initially said to Moroni isn't going to work in Australia because it's too hot here, but maybe there's some flowers that it will work with. I'm going to show you our other ranunculus. So here's the other two beds. And they really are so far behind. And other people in our area have their ranunculus. They're harvesting them right now. And ours are just looking terrible. Like, look how small. We, we have noticed that this garden bed, it's really shaded by huge gums. Like, really, really huge gums. So it doesn't kind of get sun on it until about lunchtime. And then the sun's gone again by four o'clock in the afternoon. This is seed that I saved from last year's crop. They're probably doing the best out of everything. Um, this is new uh, corms that I bought. This is seed that I bought and have grown. And all of this over here, I am pretty sure it was purchased corms. So it's looking a little bit like our ranunculus this year, again, are not going to be a go-ahead. So maybe next season, for th season three, we might have that figured out. It's a little bit disappointing. I just wanted armfuls of them. That might be enough for today's video. I'll do a proper walkthrough and I'll take you out to the paddocks next week and show you what everything's looking like out there. It's starting to take off at the start of spring. Um, our house yard's starting to look nice. The studio, as you saw in the start of the video, starting to get it done. We're gonna get the, the walls have been moved now. I'll go and show you. The walls have been moved. We've got the, um, the wiring's been, well, checked. I've got to do a little bit more running wires than the electrician will check it one more time before we stick the plaster over it and um, we've got to put the insulation in. We're going to go in this afternoon and buy that, but we honestly feel really tired. You can probably tell. I look tighter and tighter as the videos go along, but let me show you this. Okay, it still looks kind of messy, I know. Oh, I nearly tripped on that wire. So we've got it pretty well cleaned up, except for my mess. I'm, I've got flowers here. So let me go over here and show you backwards. We've got a little area in there. We're putting another wall across here and there'll be a desk in there. So that'll be for the kids to do homeschooling. We typically don't 
do homeschooling. But with all these lockdowns, the kids have spent more time at home doing school than they have at school this year. So we just thought, you know what, while we've got this space going together, let's just put a room for their school in there as well. Um, Because I just feel like it's awful for them to have to sit in their bedrooms doing school when that's their personal space. You know, that's the place they should be able to go to relax. It shouldn't be a place where, you know, it's not something that, well, I wouldn't say a It's a bad thing because they don't mind homeschooling, but the reason they're having to homeschool is pretty crappy. So I think if we, I can be working out here on the flowers while the girls are doing their school and James can play out here. We're just kind of setting it up so the whole family can be together in the mornings while school's happening. So yeah, that's going to be that section in there. The piano will come out here. We'll put the, the stuff that they need in there for school. This room here is going to be for Moroni, so that's going to be his own space. And then, of course, (laughs) the woman gets the big space, but really it's for the business. So what I'm thinking is this wall, I have an air conditioner up here, putting the workbench all the way along that wall and then just have tables in the middle here. And we think it'll be a really fun space as well because if we have family over, if we get to have family over for Christmas we can all be out here and set it up really nice with the flowers and everything. So Christmas on the flower farm is what we're hoping for this year. Um, All of my family are just going to, you know, we might have to say, hey, it's this weekend and we all travel. Well, we don't. This is the first year in like 15 years that I haven't had to travel for Christmas. But people are coming here, so that's nice. Um, Moroni's family can't, well, unless things dramatically change. But they're all over in Mexico, so at this point we can't get them over here. Hopefully that will change very soon. Anyway, I'm going to sign off now. Thanks for watching again. Um, If you haven't subscribed, hit subscribe and follow along and I'll give you that tour of the farm next week. Okay, see ya.